Hello everyone, I'm Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we'll be covering various financial concepts with the help of different questions. So we'll be understanding the core concept through a set of different questions. Before beginning up with the session, for all those who are watching this video for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our telegram group where we share some free quizzes, the updates for all our videos and you can also post your queries over here. So before getting started, there is another piece of information which I would like to share up with you all. So as you all know that exams are around the corner, so we have come up with the crash course for your RBI grade B preparations. You can visit our website and check out the details of this very course where we'll be providing you with some PDFs, videos, mocks and m much more. So you can avail the discount offer with which this course has been launched. It has been launched with 40% discount. So this is the uh, course and uh, on this you'll be getting 40% off to avail this offer. You can use this coupon code. For further details, you can visit our website and check out the details. So let's get started now. This is the very first question which says, what does it refer to over here? So as you can see, here are two statements mentioned and they are asking us about the concept which is talked about over here. So let's read these statements one by one and try to understand the concept. The first statement says it is a loan or advance for which the principal or interest payment remain overdue. And the second statement says banks in India are required to classify it into substandard, doubtful and loss asset. So what is the concept which is being talked about over here? They are talking about the loan or advance on which the payment is overdue. Now there are banks, there are different institutions which are into the business of lending. Why do banks lend? They lend so that later on they can get back the principal amount along with some interest and that will help bank in making the profit. But there are situations when banks are not able to recover these loans. For example, bank has given a loan for say one year period. So people may not be able, people might not be able to return back the money after this time span. So the amount becomes overdue. Such loans or advances are known as NPAs. So the concept which is talked about here is NPAs, which is non-performing asset. Why non-performing? Why do we call it non-performing? That is because it is not reaping the benefit, the fruit which the banks expected that they will get by lending those loans. So that loans turn out to be not performing well for the bank. That's why we name them as non-performing assets. So in, uh, these are the loans or advances on which the amount is overdue. In India, this amount has been, the overdue time has been specified as 90 days. So if this amount is overdue beyond a period of 90 days, then we categorize it as an NPA. Now further they are talking about the classification of NPAs. So in India, we have to classify NPAs in three categories. Let us have a look at these three categories. The first category is substandard assets. Now those loans or advances which have become NPA and stay in that category for a period of say up to 12 months, then we call them substandard assets. Then we have the doubtful assets. Now those assets, that is those loans or advances which have been under the substandard category for a period up to one year, we call them doubtful assets. We start doubting their effectiveness that they won't be able to repay us anymore. So we categorize them as being a doubtful asset. Third category is that of loss assets. Now at times there are certain loans which have been recognized by the banks or by RBI inspection or by the auditors that they are not going to repay us anymore. But still the banks have not yet written them off. Written them off. So they will be shown under the category of loss assets. It's an asset where loss has been identified, be it by bank, be it by auditors or be it by RBI inspection. But the amount has not yet been written off wholly. So these are the three categories under which we have to classify the NPAs in India. Now you can easily answer this question. The concept being talked about over here is NPA. NPA is the acronym for non-performing assets. Now let's move on to question number two. 
So this is question number two. It says which of the following is not a part of initiatives undertaken for NPA resolution in India. So there has been a history of the NPA resolution process in India. Various steps have been undertaken in India to resolve this very problem of NPAs. Now let's have a look at the options mentioned over here and we'll discuss each of these options. So the first one is SARFICE. It's basically an act. Then we have the debt recovery tribunals. Third is the joint lenders forum and fourth is peer-to-peer -peer lending platform. These three we are going to talk about as far as the peer-to-peer -peer lending platform is concerned. In the previous session which I took on NDFCs, I discussed a bit about this concept. So we discussed about the peer-to-peer -peer lending NDFCs which was basically a classification of NDFC on the basis of activity. So these lending platforms actually acts as an interface intermediary which helps in linking the lenders and the borrowers together. So they provide that platform where the lending and borrowing can take place. So these are actually not the ones who are or not a step which has been taken for NPA resolution. It's basically an NBFC which is set up so it more likely it's going to prevail the concept of financial inclusion. So this is not going to be the answer. Now let's discuss about the other three. I talked about the options talked about the debt recovery tribunal. So it was one of the first steps which was taken for NPA resolution in India. During the time of 1990s, these tribunals were set up. Before that, you had to go through a long, uh, through a lengthy court procedures in order to get your amount recovered. By setting up these tribunals, what was the initiative taken? These tribunals were actually set up so that they can help in the recovery of those loans. So you can approach these tribunals for the recovery, but you don't need to go through the lengthy court procedures. So that was an advantage which these tribunals offered. So they help the banks and financial institutions recover their dues in a speedily way without being subject to the lengthy court proceedings. Secondly, we talked about the surf IC Act. The option says surf IC Act. So it's the acronym for the Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and Enforcement of Security Interest. So a very big name, but a very simple task. So what was the task? It is also a step taken to help recover the NPAs. And in this case also, you don't need to approach the debt recovery tribunals or the court and go through the, those lengthy procedures in order to recover the amount. So this act gives certain privileges to the banks or the financial institutions to recover the amount. They can auction the property, the collateral in order to recover the dues and many other th such things. Thirdly, the the third option is that of the joint lenders forum. So it's a forum where to whom how much has been lent is basically maintained. So kind of a database. Now why is there to make a joint lenders forum? At times it happens that suppose I am a person and I have taken, uh, suppose I am a person and I have taken loan from bank A. Okay, so this person has taken a loan from where? From bank A. Now the time comes to repay the loan to bank A and this person may not have that money. So what this person will do? The person will take another loan from bank B and use that loan to repay A. Now when the time comes to repay the loan of B, it will take loan from some other bank C and repay. So this vicious cycle will continue and your problem of NPAs will never get resolved. So in order to prevent such a vicious cycle from taking place, what they did, they form made this forum. So this forum was made so that uh, the database can be maintained about which lender has given how much to which borrower. So that some other bank doesn't give the loan or the uh, finance to same person. So it was formulated to prevent the instances where one person takes loan from one bank to pay back the loan to some other bank. Other than this also various other steps have been undertaken be it strategic debt restructuring, be it asset reconstruction company, be it IBC code. Uh, I'll plan a special session on IBC as well. It's an important topic. So these were few steps which have been taken for 
NTA resolution. So all these three are part of the resolution process. This one is not a part. So the question talked about which of this is not a part. So the answer is only for um, option number B. Now let's move on to question number three. This question says that ARSA is a special type of financial institution. Before reading, I would like to tell you that this is again a case-based question, a caselet. So please read the caselets very carefully because they are not very difficult to understand. They try to test your basic concept, but you should be thorough with the concepts. So I hope you will not find any problem in answering this now when I have discussed the concept of NPS. Let's have a look at it. So this caselet says, Arcel is a special type of financial institution that buys the debtors of the bank at a mutually agreed value and attempts to recover the debts or associated securities by itself. So it's registered under RBI, regulated under SARFICE Act to take over the portion of the debts of the bank and to quali and, uh, banks that qualify to be non-performing. So what they are doing, they are taking over the NPAs. So they are basically into the business of buying bad loans from the banks. This is very important. So what they are doing, they are, uh, Arcel is basically a firm which is taking up the NPAs of the banks and trying to resolve them. So it is into the business of buying the NPAs from the bank. The concept being talked about here is that of asset reconstruction company. So asset reconstruction companies are those companies which buy such NPAs or such other stress assets from the bank and then they try to go through some resolution process. So they'll pay something to the bank and they'll take over uh, these. Uh, so some amount of payment is basically done and these uh, NPAs are taken over. So it will relieve the bank from the uh, NPAs and uh, its balance sheet will get cleared and those asset reconstruction companies will in, be involved in various things to recover that amount. They may confiscate the property of the borrower, they may sell off the collateral, they may sell off their property, they may help them to improve their business. So different steps may be taken up by the asset reconstruction companies to recover the amount. So they'll actually buy them, buy the NPS from banks and use them for the recovery part. So Arcel is one of such asset reconstruction companies. Now this is not a hypothetical example. Arcel is actually a asset reconstruction company which exists in India. The full form is Asset Reconstruction Company India Limited. It is one of the India's first and largest asset reconstruction company which is into the business of buying the NPAs of these banks and financial institutions. So uh, you should be aware about such institutions which play a really very important role in the economy. So this was the concept of the asset reconstruction companies. Now if I move back to the question, it talked about what kind of institution is Arcel. So as it is into buying of bad loans and then it is regulated by the Surfice Act. So we can easily get an idea that some kind of NPA resolution process is taking place and the kind of company which does so is a asset reconstruction company. Now let's move on to question number four. So this is question number four. It says which of the following statement is or are incorrect about the prudential, prudential framework for resolution of stress assets directions 2019. So if I talk about these stress assets, they, they include your NPAs. Other than that, there are certain uh, loans on which the amount have not yet been recovered. So banks may offer a lower interest rate, give more time to recover. So such restructured loans are also part of stress assets. Then certain written off assets are also part of stress assets. So kind of N NPA kind of things are actually the part of your stressed assets. So there were some norms which were uh, notified by RBI in 2019 on how to resolve these cases of NPAs or stress assets. So we'll go through those norms first and then we'll move back to the question. So RBI came up with a circular on the resolution of these stressed assets when in the month of June 2019. 
so it came up with a framework and this framework was applicable to various institutions so let's have a look at such institutions first of all as far as scheduled commercial banks are concerned all scheduled commercial banks have to adopt this framework excluding your regional rural banks then other than these scheduled commercial banks we have another category and that is of all india term financial institutions we have nabard exim bank sidbi so all these are actually part of your uh, part of those institutions which have to adopt this very framework next what we have is small finance banks then ndfcs ndfcs are also the ones which have to adopt this framework now they have specified the category of ndfcs which have to adopt this framework they include your all deposit taking ndfc and all systemically important non deposit taking ndfc now if you would have uh, gone through the last very session which i took on ndfc you will be easy you will easily be able to identify that these are two different categories of ndfcs so these are the organizations to which this framework is applicable moving further what is this framework all about so they have come up with this framework in order to identify the stress assets to maintain them to resolve them so it's a framework for early recognition reporting and the resolution of stress assets in a time bound manner these new norms what they do they give a 30 day period to review the borrower so earlier what used to happen if you have uh, given a loan to some borrower who defaults on that loan so even if it's a day that the person has defaulted the things have to be reported okay but now as per these new norms a 30 day period has been given in this very period the lenders can actually check out the borrowers how they will will they be able to pay back you and accordingly make a resolution plan for them so that is why these norms are really very really useful moreover they also talk about special mention accounts special mention accounts is basically a step which has been taken to identify these nps as soon as possible so once a person starts defaulting or his payments become overdue these have to be accounted in this account so for those principal and interest payments which are due for 1 to 30 days the special mention account zero needs to be maintained for that then for 31 to 60 days sma is 1 and for 61 to 90 days sma 2 so 0 1 2 these are prepared for as they help in early identification and reporting of the stress assets now i have told you that 30 day period is given to review the status of the borrower and once that is done once you have devised a proper resolution plan you have to begin up with the resolution process in respect of these uh, the resolution process must be implemented within 180 days after you are done with this review period now because of this was to be implemented from january and to certain institutions earlier only but because of covid some relaxation was given you can check out the rbi website for further details for enrolled students i'll be adding up this uh, these things in your documents as well so you can check these from there uh, for a certain period relaxation was given and that period was not to be counted in review period the reason being that because of covid obviously the businesses were not running the people were not having money to repay so it was not a correct scenario to in incorporate uh, the loans as npas so that's why some relaxation work was given but the question just talks about the framework so i discussed the framework with you all now if we move back to the question and check that which of these statement is incorrect so the first statement says that these regulations are applicable only to the scheduled commercial banks this is incorrect we talked about the ndfcs nabard and all to whom they are applicable second is these norms leave it to the discretion of lenders and give them 20 days to start working on resolution plan from the day of default no it gives 30 days so this is again wrong 
The third one says that the lenders will follow the early stress recognition guidelines of RBI and thus they will categorize borrowers into special mention accounts based on the delay of repayment. So this is correct. I talked about the special mention accounts which are created. So only third is correct. So first and second are incorrect. Answer is option C. This was all for today's session. I hope you found this session to be useful. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.